The medium nerve arises from the junction of the medial branch of the lateral cord and the lateral branch of the medial cord of the brachial plexus, then runs above the brachial artery through the brachial canal adjacent to the biceps and the brachialis muscles. It traces the brachial artery along the upper arm to the elbow where it is protected only by the bicipital eponeurosis. In the forearm, it passes between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle, then under the flexor digitorum superficialis arch to the wrist, over a muscular hiatus between the flexor pollicis longus and the flexor digitorum profundus muscles, and then under the retinaculum of the carpal flexors between the scaphoid and pisiform bones. At the carpus, it splits into two terminal branches, one lateral for the thenar muscles, and the second sensory motor for the interosseous muscles of the first, second and third interdigital spaces. Two main collateral branches of the median nerve are described. The first is the anterior interosseous nerve, which emerges approximately three centimetres distal to the humero-radial joint. It follows along the surface of the interosseous membrane to join the pronator quadratus muscle at the distal base of the forearm. The second branch is a small cutaneous palmar sensory branch that arises from the pronator quadratus muscle to pass laterally along the radius. In the axilla and arm, we are going to use the axillary and brachial arteries as a guide to follow the median nerve, which, in the axilla, is the most anterior nerve to the axillary artery. We then move along the arm using the elevator technique. The median nerve remains a satellite of the brachial artery until it reaches the elbow. There, the lateral aspect of the biceps tendon and the brachial artery, and thus the median nerve, are in close proximity. The median nerve is the most medial component of this complex called BAM, biceps tendon, brachial artery, median nerve. Starting from this position in the BAM, the median nerve enters the forearm between the two heads of the pronator teres muscle. We are going to follow it down to the forearm, where it goes under the arcade of the flexor digitorum superficialis in front, and then behind where it is located in the muscular interstice, corresponding to the hiatus between the flexor pollicis longus and the flexor digitorum profundus. The patient will flex her thumb to identify the flexor pollicis longus at that point. The path of the median nerve then follows the flexor digitorum superficialis at the second ray. It is also in close anatomical relation to the pronator quadratus and the flexor carpi radialis, reaching the carpal tunnel and passing under the flexor retinaculum. It is important to use this view of the median nerve where we can measure its diameter. The bony references are the scaphoid laterally and the pisiform bone cortex medially. 
We can also show the intrinsic mobility of this median nerve by asking the patient to flex their fingers. On the view of the pronator quadratus, we can identify a small superficial collateral branch of the median nerve corresponding to the palmar cutaneous branch. We are now going to focus on an important collateral branch of the median nerve, the anterior interosseous nerve. From a technical point of view, it is easier to see it from its distal end below to the pronator quadratus. Using the elevator technique, we are going to follow this branch or neurovascular bundle in front of the interosseous membrane and this anterior interosseous nerve is going to join the median nerve 3 cm to 4 cm below the elbow fold. Here is an axial view showing an example of a median nerve disorder. It appears hyperechoic, with loss of its fibrillar pattern as it passes under the flexor retinaculum. This sagittal view clearly shows a stricture over the flexor retinaculum. Above it, the nerve appears hyperechoic and thickened with loss of its fibrillar pattern. On this axial view, we follow the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve and find a small neuroma with a hypoechoic appearance. <laughs>